I'm going to talk more about paper because paper, I've got a paper workshop coming up and your complete paper solution is what to do with all that paper you don't know what to do with. So you have a regular filing system that I help you set up and then there's extra. There's the interesting information and the resources that you think you need in the future at some point. And that's the stuff that actually tends to pile up the most. Um, and especially when you're interested in a lot of different things, it's easy to have interesting information proving that you know what you're talking about on the interesting things you're interested in. So it tends to pile up. So I have a couple of suggestions for dealing with um, interesting and resource information. First of all, you got to think of it as its own category, right? These are the kinds of papers you're keeping for future reference, whether it's about something you're interested in, a hobby, a club, a committee, um, some learning that you're doing, all the paperwork involved with that class you're taking. Those are interesting information pieces, right? But so are recipes and so are gardening tips and so are how to deal with your car. Um, you know, whatever your situation is, the articles about the stuff you're interested in, politics, health and wellness, those are the things that are interesting to you. And it's fine, but you need to know what those categories are. Um, and start thinking about which of those categories can come and go, as in you read the information, you digest it, you let it go. You don't need the rest the reference, for instance. For me, that's a lot of the political stuff I'm interested in and some of the music stuff I'm interested in. I read about it, I let it go, I don't need to keep it once I've read it. It's either in my brain or it was just a passing uh, piece of information. But then there's the stuff that's like your gardening tips that you need for the spring or stuff around your house, the household details of how to, let's say, switch the direction of your fan for summer and winter, things like that. Those are things that you want to hang on to so you can access them when you need them, right? So there's a couple different ways of doing that. I recommend calling it your resource area. Um, and having the tips and tricks to deal with your home in a notebook or a file that's just specifically the stuff about your home. Um, and one notebook binder or file for each of your interests and keeping those things um, that you're going to refer to in that in there. So it's about defining a place for each of your interests and gathering all the information you already have about those interests into the same place. So you gather that stuff together into that location. It could be a box, it could be a bin, it could be a lot of different things, but what is that um, that you're currently interested in and put the stuff there. Then go through that pile of stuff and pick out the best version of the information. How many lasagna recipes do you really need? I, every once in a while, will read a new one and think, that sounds good, I will test it. If it's better than my old recipe, I'll keep that one instead of the other recipe I've been using. Most of the time, it is not better than the recipe I was already using, and so I let it go. Um, but it's about being a rotation system. Can you rotate? the new information incorporated into the old information and how you're going to use it and then let something go. What is replacing outdated information? What is the best version of how to explain how to trim your rose bushes? What is the best version of how to's that you have? And what is the stuff that's relevant for your current living situation, your current hobbies, your current things, right? Um, so what I want you to think about after you gather all the like things together, all the recipes, all the gardening tips, all the pet care tips, all the car tips, whatever it is, all the stuff about that committee, all the stuff about that project or that cause you're interested in, you gather that all together, you consolidate it, you pick the best versions of things, and then you think about when will I use this again? Often that information is already in your brain. You don't even need to look it up anymore because you've used it often enough or you've spoken about it often enough, in which case you may not actually need it and you can let it go. Um, but always think about that. Is this the best version? 
this is a temporary piece of information until I incorporate it into what I'm doing. Um, and where, where and how am I going to enter it into the place it's going to live? So you designate that place and you transfer the information to that place so it's there when you need it. Not just it's here somewhere, but the information on gardening is in the gardening file, in the file cabinet, third file back. And that's where I find that. And every time I run across a piece of gardening information, I put it there. Okay. So that's how you make that connection of, but I need it. I need to see it to remember about it. Instead, define the place for that interest and always put the stuff there. If that's as far as you get in terms of consolidating, you're better off than having it scattered all over the place visible for when you need it. Okay. Hope this helps. If you want more information about your complete paper solution, where I go more in depth on this topic and many others about all the paper and interesting information in your house, you can go to morethanorganized.net slash workshops, and you'll find all the details for your complete paper solution there. In the meantime, have a delightful day, and I'll see you next Monday.